Thank you for joining me. I hope you've been keeping well. The timestamps, as always, are in the description box. Let's get right into it. Story number one. OP writes, I, 29 female, got married a year ago yesterday. My husband, 30, and I have been together for five years in total. My husband has been best friends with Shasha, 30 female, since they were in diapers. I knew that and never really had a problem with their friendship until my husband and I officially started dating. Shasha would always try and get between us, and every date we went on, she was there coincidentally, which was relatively annoying because my husband would let her stay with us on all those dates. Now, yesterday was my wedding anniversary, and my husband forgot since he had a road trip with Sasha. I didn't know about this road trip until he said he was leaving. I didn't bother telling him it was our anniversary since he didn't remember and he would probably still spend the day with Sasha even if he did know. I didn't bother telling him bye. I just walked out and decided I was going to go shopping and do something for myself. I did that but then his mother called me during the day wishing me a happy anniversary and asked where my husband was because he wasn't answering his phone. I told her the truth about his whereabouts and he didn't remember our anniversary. She was shocked and told me that she didn't think Shasha and my husband still had feelings for each other. I asked what did she mean. She said that they did date in high school, but my husband told me that he never did like Shasha romantically. Everything started becoming more clear now. Maybe he did remember our anniversary, but chose not to say anything because he loved Shasha. If he loved her, he could have told me before we got married. I would have been hurt, but I understand feelings and I know you can't control them. I don't know how to comprehend anything right now. I'm numb and I don't get it. All I know is that my husband doesn't even love me. Let's get a comment with a reply from OP and then we get OP's update. He clearly has zero respect for your relationship. I can't even fathom a husband not telling his wife he's going on a road trip. You know darn well that Shasha knows it's your wedding anniversary and she planned this. I'm so sorry. You will never come first. And that is not a marriage. It's best to leave now while you still have time to find someone else. And Opie replies, Thank you for the advice. And in all honesty, this is my last straw. I'm currently waiting for him to arrive so I can speak to him about this. And here's OP's update. Hello everyone. Thank you all for the kind words and advice. I really do appreciate it. Although some of you didn't understand the point of my post and started questioning why I married him in the first place, why I didn't set boundaries and questioned my self-respect. I have all the answers you wanted as well as the update many of you have been asking for. I would first like to say that not everyone's life is easy and not everyone can just get up and leave whenever. Gaslighting, manipulation and emotional attachments also exist. Sure, some of you wouldn't stand for it and the disrespect, but I did. I made a mistake and I'm owning up to it. I really don't understand what's the point of bashing me like you know the situation. I did come here to rant and I didn't expect this to blow up like it did. But anyways, I'd firstly like to state that I grew up in the foster care system. My life wasn't the best. When I met my quote husband unquote, I was overwhelmed and overjoyed at the fact that someone wanted me and liked me. When things started to progress with us, I ignored all his mistakes because I thought he would be the only person who would have accepted me. I know that's not an excuse, but I honestly didn't have a backbone and my self-respect intact either. I was a pushover. It's also the fact that I wasn't in a great place financially and I was just so done with it. Some of you asked why I didn't set boundaries with him and Sasha. It's because they are inseparable and I was afraid he would leave me for her. I didn't want to be alone again. I wanted to be happy, you know. Some of you people think that I did it because I was desperate. 
Genuinely speaking, I was so very desperate because I didn't want to lose him. I took it all because I was afraid to live my childhood all over again. I didn't plan coming here and giving my life story, but here I am. Now, the most important part that everyone has been waiting for. My, quote, husband, unquote, called me as soon as he got back. I ignored his calls since I had to leave for work. I'm pretty sure he called a hundred times, demanding to know where I was. After work, I went straight to his home. I walked in and behold, Sasha sitting on the kitchen counter, chatting to my husband, smiling and laughing. At that moment, I wanted to scream and cry. I hated it. My husband saw me and came up to me asking me where the heck I was. I told him we needed to talk and took him upstairs. He asked what was up, the audacity he had. I've genuinely had enough, so I told him I wanted a divorce because he went on a road trip with another woman on our anniversary. I cried and screamed till I couldn't anymore, and all he did was effing stand there looking at me. I was so frustrated. I asked him if he had anything to say, and all he said was that I shouldn't have yelled like that, because Sasha was here and she would be offended if I thought that I couldn't trust her. My last effing straw. I left, and the next time I see him, it's with divorce papers. I'm not going to cry any longer because I deserve better. I'm currently looking for divorce lawyers, and I will be starting the process as soon as I can. The audacity of that man after all I've done for him. It's clear that he chose Shasha because even though she wasn't in the same room as us, he thought of her and her feelings. I broke down in front of him and he effing thought of her. Again, thank you all for the kind messages. I appreciate it very much. I will keep you all updated. We're going to get some comments with replies from OP soon. OP, I'm glad that you found your voice and that you stood up for yourself and that you're leaving this situation. It's one year that's been lost, but you know, that's better than two years is better than three years. I'm really sorry that after your first post, you received comments from people telling you it's your fault, you shouldn't have married him, you should have left him a long time ago, etc, etc. People need to understand that making comments like that on the internet or in person are usually not helpful at all because the person in a bad relationship, a bad marriage, has already been broken down so much by their significant other. And as a result, they are already so hard on themselves as well and telling themselves that they're stupid, they're worthless, all those negative things. So coming in and telling them it's your fault, you allowed this, etc, etc, is not helpful. And if you know somebody in a situation like that, in a relationship like that, the best thing you can do is to listen and tell that person that you're there for them. Whatever they decide, whether it's to stay or to leave, you are going to be there for them. If you come down hard on them and blame them and tell them it's their fault, the only thing you will achieve is to isolate them further from the outside world. They will shut down and never confide in you again. And then when the time comes when they really want to leave, when they are mentally at that place where they've had enough and they want to leave, it's going to be harder for them because they are not going to have that support network because they've already turned away from you because they feel ashamed and embarrassed because you've told them that they've done something wrong by staying. So please keep that in mind. If you have somebody in this kind of a situation, simply listen, be a support to them. Let them know you are there for them. Whatever they need, you are going to be there for them. Be kind. Let's get some comments with replies from Opie. You told him how you feel and all he could think about was Sasha. He's so effing stupid, and I'm glad you're divorcing that piece of crap. Opie replies, I've stated he will always choose her. I didn't think he would have been so heartless, though. He's not worth my time. If only I had a time machine. And someone else says, I can only imagine growing up the way you did, but I do have childhood trauma myself. I'd definitely get with a therapist as soon as possible. You deserve to heal. He took advantage of you in every way, it seems like. But now you did it. You effing stood up for you. Shasha and him are really just huge pieces of crap. Because of that, you do not need their validation. 
Also, I would have waited to get a lawyer first and then told him. Opie replies, Therapy was way more trauma, but maybe I should try again. It's not easy finding lawyers in such a short time, but I'm trying my best and I had to confront him. Yes, I'm leaving him for myself and I'm not going to let him put me down anymore. Someone else comments, Yep, wish him and Sasha well and move on. Focus on you and trust me, there's so much more out there in life. OP replies, I will focus on myself from now onwards. And yeah, I wish them the best regardless. In all honesty, they probably won't last. And OP, I echo that. I don't think it will last if they do decide to full out go and have a romantic relationship. Maybe they already are having one. We don't know. So OP, good for you. I'm glad that you're leaving him, that you're going to see a divorce lawyer. This would not have gotten better. You said that you were afraid that if you spoke up, he would leave you. And just that in itself already tells me he probably would have, or he would have bullied you and told you this is the way it is and you have to accept it. And you would have been dying inside a little bit every day. And neither of them would have cared. Opie, your best years are yet to come. You said you wanted to be happy. I really believe you are going to be happy. And let's move on to story number two. Opie writes, I can't move. If I move, it becomes real and I have to accept what I saw and think of what's next. I came home from work early and saw my sister's car, thinking maybe she was dropping off some food from her job. But no, I walked in and see my husband and my sister naked in my kitchen, the kitchen I paid for. As soon as I registered what I saw, I got into my car and left. I kept driving. Just driving, 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 until I found the hotel I'm at now. I don't want to believe it. I don't know what to do. My sister, my only family, and my best friend, the one who's supposed to be there for me and support me. My husband, my person, my other half, the one who's supposed to love and respect me. The two most important people in my life have ruined everything. I've blocked them both on my phone. I don't want to hear any of the BS excuses they'll come up with. I don't want to confront this. I want to go back to this morning when everything was fine. Oh, Opie, I think that must be the worst kind of betrayal when it's your significant other with a family member or a very, very close to your friend of yours. And you say you wish you can go back to this morning when everything was fine, but you know the reality is that it hasn't been fine for a long time. Let's get some comments with replies from OP and then we get OP's update. The quote, my only family, unquote, part is what hit me hard. I'm so sorry, OP. OP replies, yeah, we cut contact with our abusive parents seven years ago. Thought we were supposed to have each other's backs always. Someone else says, You need to move back into the house and get a divorce lawyer. Abandoning the house may mean he gets to keep it. And now Opie's update. Sorry for not replying to comments and not updating. Things have been hectic. I didn't think I needed to explicitly say this. But by naked, I meant they were butt naked and effing in the kitchen. I admit mentioning that I paid for the kitchen was odd and kind of funny. But anyone who knows me knows that the kitchen is my pride and joy. So yes, when I saw my sister and husband effing in my kitchen, it stuck with me. And yes, they did see me. When I got to the hotel, I cried for a few hours. And then I just wanted to tell someone, anyone. The two people I would talk to when something happened in my life were the two I needed to talk about. And it was 11 something in the evening. So I wasn't going to disrupt my friends evenings and burden them. So instead I came to Reddit thinking not many would see it. The response I received was overwhelming. I want to say thank you to everyone that sent me kind words and advice. Thank you so much for all the virtual hugs. I know I only commented once. It's because I had so much to think about and do. 
I appreciate all the love and support. There was so much amazing advice given in the comments. Although a lot of it was American based, I still appreciate it. But one thing I did see a lot was to unblock them and keep the texts and calls as evidence. So I did do that. After posting and another good cry, I knew that I had to get my crap together. I didn't have my sister or any family to help, so I had to do it myself. I started researching what my next steps were. In the morning, my friend called me, saying my sister contacted her, wondering if I had been in contact with her. I told her what happened, and she very kindly offered her spare room and a day off work to help me sort stuff out. I called in sick at my job, and my friend helped get things done. I got in contact with my friend who works at a bank, and she helped me start sorting my financials. My friend also found me a lawyer to consult with. After my phone consultation with the lawyer, I was so overwhelmed. I now know why so many women don't divorce their cheating husbands. It's such a lengthy, expensive and emotionally draining process. I, fortunately, make a stable income and can support myself, and we, fortunately, don't have kids. I have to remember that things aren't going to happen in one day. It will all take time. As for the house, unfortunately, his parents did buy it for us. And to be honest, after what I saw, I don't want it. I will try to get reimbursed for my beloved kitchen. Otherwise, it can all burn for all I care. This has been super draining, but I knew I had to talk to them. I already knew there was no coming back for my husband. And when I checked his messages, they were exactly what I thought they would say. I'm sorry, it's not what it looks like. We didn't mean for it to happen. Please come home. I love you, blah, blah, blah. Just absolute BS. A small part of me thought maybe I could find it in me to forgive my sister, as we only have each other. But after I opened her messages, all hope was lost. She used the same excuses we heard our father use when he cheated on our mother and beat us. She said the same things our mother would say when she would excuse our dad's behavior and also beat us. I spoke to her this morning and asked her to tell me straight up who, what, where, when and why. She told me back in July when I was on a girl's trip, she was at our house and joked with my husband that I would cheat on him on the girl's trip because that's what, quote, always happens, unquote. He said nah, and they joked about it, but she said he could get even with me, and they ended up doing it once. One time led to two, to three, then whenever they could do it. There was never any evidence or signs or anything that I was going to, or even thinking of cheating. I told her we were done, and there is nothing she could do to bring us back together. I later received a call from an unknown number. It was my mother, who I haven't spoken to in seven years. Turns out my sister has been in contact with her and told her what had happened. And my piece of crap mother, the same woman who beat me for breathing wrong, had the audacity to say this is what I get for taking her daughters away from her. It hurts so much. I know things are going to get messier and this is going to be a long few years. I've now lost all my blood relations. I need to get all my crap and find a new place. I want to show them that I can and I will thrive without them. Again, thank you all from the bottom of my heart for all the love and advice. All the people in the comments that could relate to me, I'm so sorry. Let's get some comments with replies from Opie. I'm very proud of you for taking charge and standing up for yourself. I know it's very hard, but you've got this. You will get through this. Opie replies, Thank you for your kind words. It's pretty hard losing the only family I had, but I'm trying so hard to stay optimistic. Betrayal like this is effing devastating. It will be long and hard and draining, but I will make it. And someone else writes, Good on you for standing up for yourself and being the bigger person. I'd probably be in prison if it was my sister. Also, get tested. 
Opie replies, Thank you. I didn't want to do anything I would regret, but I can be a little petty, so I might tell our mutual friends so they all know what happened. And yes, my friend is a nurse, and when I told her what happened, that was the first thing she brought up. Someone else asks, Out of curiosity, have you asked his parents if they knew what was going on? This will give them the opportunity to hear what actually happened, rather than the lies he'll tell them to cover his bad behavior. Opie replies, As soon as I started receiving messages from his mother, I knew he had been feeding them a false narrative. She's been calling me names for, quote, bringing my cheating backside and my slutty sister into his life, unquote. She never liked me because of my background and thought I should forgive my mother. Unfortunately, all I'll hear from them is the BS he's told them. Opie, it sounds to me like you are getting yourself away from a lot of toxic people. Your husband and your sister were just looking for an excuse to go ahead and cheat. And they found a really weak excuse. You know, people usually say, keep your private business private, and that is true to a large extent, depending on the circumstances. But in a case like this, you just know these people are going to lie, OP, and twist things around to make you look bad. Because they know what they did is horrible, and they're going to look terrible to other people. Tell people the truth. You don't have to give the details, but tell them the truth. I really don't like when people cheat and they cause that hurt to their partner and then they double that hurt by going around telling lies, blaming the partner, saying the partner did this or that. And then the pain is tripled because people believe it and say all these horrible things to you. So OP, just say you caught your husband and your sister in the act, you saw it with your own eyes and leave it at that. You don't have to give any more details. Some people won't believe you no matter what, but you've got the proof, you've got the messages, and the ones that don't want to believe you, they're not worth your time in any case, OP. You are so much better off without all of them. Well, that's it for this edition. Thank you so much for joining me. Please give it a thumbs up if you did enjoy it. Consider subscribing, leave a comment, and I'm going to see you again soon.